Hello everybody. So what we're going to do right now is paint this seven inch minnow into a peacock bass pattern. And the first thing we need to do is to tape off the bill uh, so that I don't get anything on it. And I'm going to go ahead and put a clamp on it so I have something to hold on to. going to prime this lure and I'm going to be using this filler primer. Uh, it's kind of a high build primer. The reason I'm using this is I want to get a really smooth finish. This lure is going to have um, no foil or anything on it so I'm relying totally on the paint to do a good job. Part of how I control the paint particles when I'm using spray paints in the shop is I use this box fan and then I use one of these old um, air filters for the house and I put it on there and I just I just crank the fan up on high and it kind of sucks all the uh, uh, particles into the filter rather than out into the room. Uh, you still want to ventilate. I've got the garage door open and uh, we'll just put a few coats on there and build it up so that it's nice and smooth. After that uh, first coat of primer dried, uh, I filled in a few little divots with just some uh, spackle, drywall spackle really, and let it dry. And then I went over the whole thing very, very lightly and gently with a uh, 320 grit sandpaper. And I didn't really even apply that much pressure because all you're trying to do is knock off the, the high parts of the primer. Uh, and even it out so that it smooths up. So now that I've gone over all that and knocked off the high points, I'm going to spray it again and it should be a little bit smoother this time and I keep doing that in layers and layers and layers until it's perfectly smooth. Alright, so the next color I'm going to put on there is a chartreuse color that I've developed. And this is what it looks like. It's kind of got a, a little bit of a sparkle to it. What it is, is it's 100 parts of opaque green, 50 parts of opaque yellow, and 50 parts of iridescent yellow. And I bought these little dropper bottles just to mix it up in and keep it convenient. Um, for my custom mixes. Moving along here, we're gonna do some scaling on the sides of the lure. And I've made this seven inch minnow lure um, before. And because I like this pattern, uh, I've developed a few things to save myself some time. And one of those is a uh, netting jig here and basically there's two sides to it and what I've done is I've sandwiched my netting in between two pieces of cardboard and taped it all together and then I've overcut oversized the uh, the cut area so that I can get a good wrap around my minnow and it doesn't it doesn't really matter what uh, paint scheme I'm doing this jig will work for any seven inch minnow uh, pattern that I'm doing. So I line the uh, lip up inside that slot there and then all I got to do is clamp it 
all the way around. And then I have access to both sides to paint and it holds it in there so I've got something to grip on and uh, it really just makes it a lot handier. Before I remove my netting, I'm going to go over the side of the lure with this uh, iridescent yellow. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me kind of a, a really subtle scale pattern along the sides. I want to avoid the gill area. Uh, really, really what I'm looking at hitting is this, this area along here. Okay, I've hit that real quick with the hair dryer just to heat set it, and now we can remove it out of the jig. Okay, this part's just a little bit trickier. I've got a template here where I've cut around the gill pattern and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that over my gill and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray let me get something to point with here I'm going to spray on the template here and let the overspray kind of soak into the gills just a little bit and I'm, I'm really just trying to catch this lower gill area just to sort of accentuate that that gill just a little bit I've got another one cut out for this gill. Alright. I'm going to paint some iridescent yellow on the gill plates themselves so that that, that cheek plate has a little bit of shine to it. So I'm going to do that on both sides. Alright, now what I want to do is I'm going to hold my brush pretty far back and just mist this orange area with uh, a little bit of that iridescent yellow. And what that'll do is that'll give it just the slightest little bit of a shine. I'm not trying to cover anything, I'm just trying to layer my paints and give it a, a nice shiny effect. See? You can, you can kind of pick that up on the camera. It looks really good in person. Alright, now what we're going to do is uh, highlight and accentuate the eyes with a little bit of opaque black mascara here. Yeah. So what you're trying to do here is just have a slide over spray all the way around on the outside. That's it. It's also the part where if you want to sign your lure, you should do so right now because we're uh, we're going to put the eyes on it and then we're going to clear coat it. So I always sign mine because I'm proud of them. On this one, I'm going to put uh, red eyes, being a peacock bass. I've got these one quarter inch uh, eyes and sometimes I epoxy them on uh, but I'm gonna try I'm gonna try just super gluing them on this time way too much all right here we go okay. 
If you watch my other videos, you'll note that I've been using this 30 minute epoxy for uh, clear coating. And I've got a couple of problems with it and one of them is workability. Um, but the other is bubbles. I, I can't seem to get all the bubbles out of it no matter how hard I try. So I've, I've been experimenting a little bit with this East Coast resin. Um, it seems to work pretty good. It's a lot more forgiving uh, on time. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually will mix some of it up, let it sit for 15 minutes, and then brush it on uh, just to get the reaction started because I have a ton of time to work with it. But this is called East Coast Resin. And yeah, eastcoastresin.com. I'm not affiliated with them. I just happen to think it's a good product and I've been using it and I've been very happy with it. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put two coats of this uh, East Coast resin on my lure before we proceed to the next step. And I think what that does is it gives the lure a lot of depth as far as its paint scheme is concerned. We're going to be adding some uh, black and some detail. And the other thing it does is it smooths the body out even more. So when I paint over that, it's going to be a really smooth surface. So for a 7-inch minnow, I've found that I need 3.2 grams of part A and 2.3 grams of part B, or thereabouts. I'm not super precise, but let's get uh, 3.2 Woo, see I went over already. So I'll do I'll do 2.8. Not exact, but it'll work. But yes, so I've 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 worked out the math. If you are if you are a really precise person, then you want 3.2 grams of A and 2.3 grams of B. But like I said, it's very forgiving, so if you uh, overshoot it like I did, don't sweat it. It'll work. Okay, now this stuff uh, is a little bit different, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir it and it's gonna get cloudy. Mm, you may not be able to see that, but you keep stirring until, it, until the cloudiness goes away. It'll clear back up, and then I'm gonna let it sit for 15 minutes. And then when I come back, I'm going to stir it again real quick, and then I'm going to brush it on. Before I get too far along here, I need to take this tape off. I almost forgot. Because I want that, I want that uh, epoxy to seep just a little bit onto that lip. Okay, we'll let that spin until it uh, stops running and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look it over and I'm going to pick off any of these little bits of brush or whatever. And then I check on it every 15 minutes. I've got a little bit of extra epoxy here so if some areas look like they're a little thin or they're not uh, getting good coverage. I'll come back and add a little bit more as this sets up, but uh, it'll probably be about 45 minutes or so before it's set up to the point where I can't mess with it anymore. I like to finish off with the uh, torch. If I see little bubbles forming, I just fire this up and then quickly brush across it with the torch just to pop the bubbles. You don't want to apply any heat. All you're doing is popping bubbles.
All right. And I've also taped off the uh, lip once more. And make sure that's on real well. And then we'll paint the back. This is a custom green uh, and really all it is is a hundred parts opaque green, 40 parts iridescent yellow, and then five parts opaque black. All right, for whatever reason it didn't record uh, that last little bit, but all I did was pull the uh, masking tape off. All right, so this is the smaller stencil that we're gonna use to do our stripes. And this is the, the larger one. So you can see, you can kind of see the effect I'm trying to go for here. So those black stripes will be inset uh, inside of the little gap there. All right, so I've got some opaque black. Okay, I also want those to kind of fade slightly at the bottom. If you look up a picture of a uh, peacock bass, they've got some markings here on their face. And so I made another little stencil to do that. And I'm gonna lay it over real quick here. Okay, and if you take a look at this pattern, here's the outline of it. Uh, what I did is I just took a flattened out picture of the globe and so that's actually all the continents just really tiny and I just printed it on a piece of paper and I took my exacto knife and cut it down really really small and then I wrapped it on this tape just to make it a little bit more uh, structurally sound but if you look real close He's got the whole world on his face. All right, now we're gonna lightly dust it once more with iridescent yellow uh, over, over these new areas. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do before I go to clear coat here, is I'm gonna take a Q-tip with a little dab of water on it and I'm gonna carefully clean over the eye. Because I've got a little bit of overspray on it. And I just want those to be really bright and shiny. Now it's ready to clear coat.